Yo, what's going on Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another video. Today we're doing the beginner's guide for Blue Yellow, which might seem a little weird because Blue Yellow has been around for quite a while. It's been very good for quite a few formats. But specifically today we're talking about the beginner's guide to Blue Yellow without Bojack because the color combination and the strategy is pretty different without it. You got to approach it a bit differently so if you're new here make sure to subscribe hit that bell so never miss a video and if you guys want to help support the channel many ways to do so down in the description but if you want more competitive content like this be sure to check out the patreon down in the description not only does it help support the channel but you can also read the articles that i post there and inquire about coaching if you're interested with that being said though we will get started so yeah again the main reason we're doing this is because blue yellow is pretty different without bojack than with so the big changes to blue yellow were bojack being banned as well as Amasu the Eliminator being errated to no longer being able to counterplay unisons. Now it specifically has to counterplay battle cards. You can still use Amasu to counterplay, you know, in response to whatever you want, and maybe like the tapping effect can still be relevant. But yeah, if you want to actually bounce something that's four or less back to their hand, it has to be a battle card now. It can no longer be a unison. So there's some big changes we'll talk about with how to play blue yellow, but firstly. I want to talk about what the blue yellow key cards are now like bojack was definitely at the top of that list and before bojack got hit i would say the top of that list was zamasu pre-errated bojack and probably less so sensu bean but anyways as for the key cards now that bojack is gone zamasu the eliminator is still definitely one of those key cards even with its errata again you can no longer counterplay unisons but you can still counterplay battle cards four or less which is still pretty good the main usage i have for zamasu in my testing is counter playing floodgate negates so like mecha freezer robotic post topo righteous aid boo unadulterated malice maybe against like cell surge something of that nature that effect is still pretty good actually counter playing battle cards that your opponent's trying to play to their board just to like aggress you and stuff that's not as vital because a lot of things have deflect nowadays like you know rose goku black being a prime example of that but that that effect doesn't come up all that much but you can like i said before you can still counterplay pretty much whatever you want to get the auto to go off when this cards play draw a card then tap a guy that's still really really good against boss monsters like you guys that have been here for a long time remember how good chomp the trickster was mutaito skill of a sage was this is a very very similar effect although it does cost one more energy than uh, than mutaito does but it's on par with chomp of the trickster for example and they both draw a card which is pretty good but with Samasu now, the check land effect is actually more relevant than it's ever been. Before, you kind of had to just like stockpile as many of them in your hand as you could in case your opponent wanted to get cheeky and play their unisons, you'd be able to counterplay them. But now you can definitely get away with charging them at least like once or twice a game, as long as you have one for your opponent's boss monster in the later stages of the game. So Zamasu Eliminator is still really good for those reasons. SS Rose Goku Black, though, is the card I have here that kind of replaces Bojack. It doesn't get, you know, it doesn't do quite as much as Bojack used to do. You know, Bojack really allows you to play proactively and still keep energy up to do things during the opponent's turn. Uh, Rose Goku Black is still a way to be proactive, although you're not getting all that energy back, but the blocker tokens you produce are gonna allow you to be really, really safe in that next turn. Like, I think without Bojack, the main thing you have to do with Blue Yellow now is be a lot more conservative with your energy. You can't just spend energy offensively willy-nilly when you need to be interrupting what your opponent's doing on their turn. But if you really want to establish a 20k double striker that's going to give you four blocker tokens and untap an energy at the end of your turn, Rose Goku Black is the way to do it. Like There are going to be a lot of scenarios in which the four blockers you get from Goku Black are going to just almost automatically get you to the next turn, which is really, really good. But with that in mind, you do need to be aware of the fact that there are some ways your opponent can interrupt those tokens because while Goku Black himself has deflect, the tokens do not. So they can't respond to the play of Goku Black, but they can respond to Goku Black playing the tokens with pure counterplays. So what do I mean by this? If you're playing against Blue, for example, they could use Godsling Technique Trunks not to stop the play of Goku Black, but to stop the play of all the tokens. So that's a that's the thing you definitely want to watch out for. And against Yellow, for example, if they have a Crusher Ball type of effect, they can also do that in response to the tokens and rest all the tokens as they come in so they're no longer able to block. But keep in mind, they only gain blocker until the end of your opponent's next turn. That still makes the tokens really, really good as combo power at later stages of the game. Like that's just 20k combo power you got if you happen to, you know, not block or lose any of those tokens. You do want to be a little bit careful with green as well because they have Freezer Charismatic Villain, which can pop the Goku Black. So if you're relying on that Goku Black to untap your energy, you might want to be a little, uh, you know, cautious of it against green. And they can pop all the tokens if you attack and they use Dorm Potential Unleashed because Dorm Potential Unleashed is a token sweeper in Dragon Ball Super because, you know, tokens only have um, energy cost, but 
they are included in dormant potentials up to effect uh so it can clear all those tokens but you can pretty much get away with playing goku black more so like in the middle of your turn not really in the beginning of your turn and by doing that your opponent's probably going to have used dormant already because that's the type of card where you got to use it in the early stages of the turn to get the most value out of it so just some ways to you know use goku black as uh, efficiently as you possibly can and sensor bean i mentioned that it's you know more of a key card than it was in the past because now we don't have bojack to give us aegis and there's not really many great aegis cards um besides bojack right so aegis is probably not something you're going to be having in blue yellow anymore so you're really going to want to stockpile the sensor beans and make sure you're using each one at a time that it really really counts it's really really important now with blue yellow so moving along there's still some other blue yellow cards that are good not always played at like four copies but still solid zamasu sacred disbelief is a tech card in blue yellow at this point like not all builds play it but it's still a card you should definitely keep in mind it can help with arrival and now that bojack is not like the main arrival of the strategy you might not want to play so many of those just like free 5k blue yellow cards because if you're not arriving as much that is a bit more of a dead card than it has been in the past so zamasu can help with that as well as its ability just being really powerful tapping a leader tapping a battle card whatever you need frost Ellie poison is still a really really good card in the format as well boss monster like boo shroud and mystery are still very very weak to this card so whether you want to main it or sideboard it this is still a good reason to play blue yellow and then graded bardock raiders war cry i just put this here to basically make mention of the fact again that without bojack's aegis you do have to be a bit more strict with your energy and great Ape bardock might not be the best way to go anymore it's still a good card don't get me wrong and there's still times that i would really want to play it in like an icarus deck or another blue yellow deck but you do have to keep in mind that you're not going to have as much energy to work with as you had in the past so you got to be really cautious maybe you play two copies maybe you play three but you got to again be really really wary of when and how you're going to use uh, raiders war cry now that we don't have the extra aegis energy Real quick, I do want to talk about new blue yellow cards that make blue yellow still worth playing, but we will go to a quick word from today's video sponsor. Dragon Ballers, real quick before we get into today's video, I just want to share something with you guys that I am very excited about. PPG is going to be hosting the Pro Support TCG weekend in Dallas, Texas, the weekend of November 6th. It's going to be a giant TCG convention weekend hosting all your favorite games. Obviously, Dragon Ball Super, Digimon, Pokemon, Magic the Gathering, and more tournaments for all those. I'm actually going to be there commentating the Dragon Ball Super side of things, the main event on Saturday, the side events on Sunday. I absolutely cannot wait. And if you guys missed out on Gen Con or heard me talk about how much fun that was, you're 110% gonna want to be at the pro support tcg weekend the other great thing too is it's just two weeks before nationals the biggest dragon ball super tournament of the year so you get some invaluable practice there but besides that it's a convention it's gonna be so much fun especially for those of you guys like me that just absolutely love trading card games definitely definitely check it out the link to sign up will be in the description i really hope to see you guys there now let's get into the video all right guys i do hope to see you at the pro support tcg weekend and if you can't make it there check out the stream for sure but anyways let's talk about new blue yellow cards because these are really good reasons to play blue yellow even though again blue yellow saw some serious hits on the ban list ss2 kefla lightning speed is an absolutely incredible card first of all shout out to the spr art where half the text is blue half the text is yellow this is actually the first time I'm noticing this that's super sick but anyways basically it's battle card removal ignoring barrier which is very very powerful and the activate main you can give it dual attack or you can even uh go further with the effect by pitching another copy of itself and uh drawing two cards and tapping down one of your opponent's cards which is always really good of course for tapping energy vegeta kaba lesson learn is another really good arrival again it doesn't really do what bojack did but it is an arrival you can play in place of bojack and this gives you some mid battle removal so blue yellow in a sense can counter itself because this can bottom deck Goku Black if they attack with it. So you do have to be a little bit strategic there, where if you're playing a mirror match or something that has access to this card, you gotta be careful if you attack with Goku Black because they can remove it. But anyways, uh, Goku hit, uh, Temporary Truce is another new blue yellow card. This is just a blue yellow combo, really. It's nice that it's like a little bit of a budget alternative to hit rapid movement. The card does have Aegis and there are very, very niche scenarios where you can play this thing and try to use that Aegis. But removal is so prevalent now that I really don't recommend it. Aegis, just the cards that have Aegis nowadays, there's too many problems with them. They're not the same as Bojack, and it's really, really hard to justify playing them and, and putting them into practice. But it does have the skill on it, so I wanted to mention it. But yeah, it is mostly just a blue-yellow free combo. 
like I said before, if you're not playing as many arrivals because Bojack is gone and maybe you don't see the value in Vegeta Kaba or Kefla, um, you can obviously trim the number on these, but you do want to play some appropriate amount if you're playing some number of Vegeta Kaba and some number of SS2 Kefla. Next though, of course, we should talk about the leaders that can play this strategy the best. You have more options than just these, but in my opinion, the best two leaders to play blue yellow are definitely gonna be Icarus and Kaba. The reasons for that, Icarus is pretty much what it was. Again, we're losing a lot of excess energy without Bojack, but you still are the yellow leader that probably draws the most cards in the game. So that's always a good thing for finding your sense of being, just having a lot of raw combo power in general. That's really, really good. Kaba though is a bit different because the blue deck so you do lose a lot of those yellow staples like power of a super saiyan like bergamo stuff like that but you do pick up for example godsling technique trunks you do have the ability to play the new hit unison which is a crazy card on its own getting you more draw power that minus one can be really really devastating in some matchups and a card like ss2 kefla can be very expensive it is an arrival for three and now like i said with blue yellow energy is more precious than ever kaba can get you an energy back when you play kefla so that's a really really good thing to keep in mind so uh these are the two leaders that i think are the most competitive for blue yellow as a shell but um you do have some other options like maybe yellow go tanks i think you really want to you know um debate that heavily though if you're gonna play yellow go tanks so you have to really be sure that a lot of extra cards are going to be used in the format to get value out of that leader otherwise i do think icarus is just a better version of that same deck although in icarus you gotta play four vanillas but they aren't really vanillas in icarus they're pretty much actually super combos so that's not even a real downside to playing icarus but yeah i think you weigh the pros and cons of playing icarus versus kaba icarus i really like the fact you get power for super saiyan all these powerful yellow staples but with Kaba, you do get that safety of blue with Godsling Technique Trunks. You do get a very, very powerful unison to play. And the Activate Battle on the leader is no joke as well. That helps you put things into play via Arrival. As with Icarus, you actually have to combo a blue yellow card to arrive. That's something to definitely keep in mind. And the final thing here, guys, these are just blue yellow cards that I want you to consider. They might not always be amazing, but they're definitely ones, again, that I want you to consider. Goku, uh, Goku Black Divine Prosperity is a card that I'm a really, really huge fan of. If you guys remember, I actually played this in earlier lists of Icarus like a couple formats ago. But what I really like about this card is that it's essentially a dimension magic in blue yellow. It's not a true dimension magic because you got to pay two to then get two back. But it's a way now that since we don't have Violent Rush Bojack, it's a way that you can defend and get energy back, which I really, really like. It's a good negate. I definitely like the card. Traitor Dangers, Fierce Trinity. I really like this card because I think it's in Icarus, it's very easy to play because meeting the board requirement to play it for two is not very difficult in Icarus. But the one thing I don't like about it is that it's really good for attacking unisons, but it doesn't attack into Boo Unison well because they're just going to be able to use Boo Unison's effect to um to get rid of it right that's kind of annoying but against other unisons this card can be really really good like baby unison like tapion unison stuff like that and then gain martine the a angel destroyer i think is another card that people are looking at because it does have aegis but this is kind of what i was talking about before where other aegis cards are just a bit too tough to use like this card says counterplay. If the battle card being played is already cost five or less, negate the skills for the turn and play this card. So the way this is ruled that I've seen is that if you are not specifically counterplaying a five or less that you can actually negate the skills of, you can't play the card. So that counterplay is very, very specific. And if you go back and look at Zamasu the Eliminator, it's actually worded differently that it's not conditional to negate the skills and play the card. You can play the card regardless. This card is conditional though on negating skills. So it's a bit tougher to use if your opponent's not playing cards you can actually counterplay. Of course you can cast it for three, but it's got no protection on it. So it's very, very, um, you know, volatile in terms of your opponent being able to remove it. When you do Aegis though, you do draw two cards, which is kind of a cool draw to the card. But again, it's just very, very weak, no protection. That's a little bit rough. But again, cards to consider for sure. Blue Yellow is definitely in a state of evolution right now. People are definitely gonna be trying to figure out how they want to play it for Nats now that Bojack is uh, no longer a tool. Hopefully this video helped you guys figure some things out. But anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'll see you guys next time.